Facebook, live, uh, a recording, the video on demand on YouTube, uh, wherever you're seeing us, we're really glad to have you with us. Um, please go ahead and register your attendance by signing the attendance pad that you're going to find in your pew, uh, and uh, give people a wave as you see them. Uh, if you're online, uh, give us a comment. Let us know that you're out there, that you're watching, who's watching with you. Uh, we just love to hear from you. If you're watching online, please feel free to like, subscribe, uh, make whatever comments that you need to make so the church knows what you uh, are feeling in your hearts right now and where the Lord is leading you. And if you know someone who could use uh, our words, please feel free to share our service with them. Um, we'd love to reach out to them. Uh, don't forget to turn in your 2022 pledge card. Uh, it really helps us do our budgeting if you have that uh, turned in so that we know uh, what we can count on. Uh, lets us know what service opportunities we can take advantage of in the next year. Um, we have Valentine's Day coming up, and so we're looking at that as a great opportunity to show our staff how much we appreciate them, especially through these really difficult times. Traditionally, we celebrate our staff during Christmas, but this year we chose Valentine's Day to show some love to our staff. Um, if you have some gifts, please send them to Bill Lynch, Janice Sampson, or Deanne Sterner, uh, our SPRC representatives. Um, drop them in the offering box there in the narthex, uh, or drop them off or mail them to the church office. Uh, if you're going to write a check, add staff gift to the memo line, please, so we know where to direct that money. Uh, on Sunday the 14th or the 13th, uh, just before Valentine's Day, we will distribute. If you have the opportunity, please, please take that time to uh, give a donation. They'll be here from 8 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. Um, if you have that opportunity, one blood donation can help three people. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a sick. Uh, I gave blood a few weeks ago, so I'm not eligible, but if you are, please, please consider it. Uh, and then the following day, that Monday, the 31st, we have a church council meeting. Uh, it'll be at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. If you'd like to attend, I guess. Uh, do we have any other announcements? Oh. Yeah, Mark, you have an announcement? Please. Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to reiterate a couple of things I announced last week, but then also something new to add. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mark Wielander. I'm the youth director here. Uh, we have an upcoming mission trip, and uh, in July, we're going to be going to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So what we got going on is if you step outside the sanctuary, there's a couple of green uh, items that are kind of standing out amongst others. Uh, it's a little box and, and, a, and a jar as well. 
we're filling up the van. Let's uh, let's gas it up, right? So if you have any loose change, spare change, laying around the house in between those car seats, bring it in, throw it in the jug over time. Over, we'll watch it grow together. Um, and then we'll cash that in and it'll fill up our van for our mission trip. Also, in the box, there's little notes there. You can write a little note to the youth, to myself, to the community we're going to. And when we get to depart on that Sunday morning, we're going to open that box and we're going to go through all those notes and we're going to either read them or, or pass them on to those we meet along our way. So thank you for your support on that. Um, additionally, Camp Fontenelle Summer Registration has opened. Um, Julie and I will be bringing more information on that, but um, don't delay. Camp Fontenelle is a great place for youth, um, all ages, and uh, we encourage everyone to um, um, sign up uh, and, and enjoy that summer camp. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and Julie, but look for more info. And the last thing, the new thing, three weeks from now, Super Bowl, um, sub Sunday, Sorry, Packers fans, um, you're out. But um, um, the um, the youth are going to be making sub sandwiches. Okay, it's a tradition we do here, and that's also going to benefit our, our mission trip. When you exit the sanctuary, there'll be a table with all kinds of sub sandwiches, some chips, maybe even a, a dessert or something. So we encourage you to to partake in that and enjoy that as well. So thank you all. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Mark. Uh, please stand as you're able to join me for the call to worship. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you, as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock salvation. And join me in our opening hymn, God is Here, uh, hymn number 660.
Please be seated. Friends, we've come together in fellowship and in worship and in celebration. And this morning we would like to especially call your attention to the beautiful flowers that we have here on the altar in the sanctuary. And they are from the Underwood family and they are in honor of Rita Underwood's 80th birthday, which is today. And Rita, we know that you are out there watching us uh, out on the internet. So we would like to, uh, in, in exchange for these beautiful flowers, which have brightened our day, perhaps we can brighten your day and uh, all of us sing together and wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rita. Happy birthday to you. We pray that it is a blessed day for you, and we pray for that day when you will be back with us in person. Friends, we lift up uh, uh, Linda Stroud and her family on the death of her mother, Marcel Platt. Platt. Uh, funeral services will be later this week over in Iowa. Uh, but we lift up Linda and her family uh, after this, uh, the passing of Marcella onto her reward. So be with them in comfort, love, and peace. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayers. We pray for our community. We pray for our country. We pray here in Douglas County, uh, where the headlines continue to scream out with new numbers, uh, new records that we don't want to set. Um, every one of us at this point knows someone who is currently affected probably with COVID and so we pray for all of those people. We pray for those who are caring for them, uh, our hospitals, our doctors, nurses, all the staff that make those things operate. Uh, we pray for our health department, and we pray for those who are making decisions on our behalf in government. And we pray for ourselves, Lord, that we will continue to do our best to be safe, although even as we do our very best, it seems, some of us have become exposed and have been uh, closed down, locked down, quarantined, um, and so help those people who are in quarantine to get through those long hours and days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for everyone who is thinking about maybe giving blood for the first time as the blood mobile will be here next sunday lord be with them in, in help and guidance and uh, encourage man it's, it's it's a needle right um so um, we, our prayers for everyone who is thinking about it and our prayers for everybody who has signed up and those who are regular givers um, and giving those gifts of life Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our youth and our children. Uh, things are rolling now uh, with both programs here at the church. So let them continue to roll on and gain speed and momentum and like a snowball, uh, grow and get bigger and touch more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. Our uh, Great Plains clergy session will be on Tuesday. The, the live session has been canceled, but we will be uh, in front of our computers again, uh, pretending like that's a uh, substitute for fellowship, and it's not. But there will still be a lot of learning taking place and a lot of online discussions. And so uh, for that uh, uh, meeting, which will happen, some 600 of us on Tuesday, let it be a meeting that is grace-filled and potential-filled and optimism-filled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we now lift up the wonderful words of prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the scripture. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, 5 and 6, and 8. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And our gospel reading for today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. And then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returns to Galilee. A report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Well, friends, for a bit of a timeline, Jesus was baptized, went into the desert for 40 days, where he was tempted by Satan, and then came out, and then began his public ministry, and he traveled north to Galilee. So by the time he got to his hometown of Nazareth today, by that time, word had already gotten out. The word was spreading. And then on the Sabbath, Luke tells us that Jesus went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And both today's passages from Nehemiah and from Luke center on Jewish worship services. And although they're separated by hundreds of years and even by thousands of years from us, we can see the commonality between these two services and what we do even in our modern Christian services today. There in the synagogue that Jesus had attended most of his life, Jesus was given the honor of reading and expounding on the scripture lesson. With the Spirit upon him, Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah about bringing good news to the poor, freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, relief for the oppressed, and proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. And then he told the people that this prophecy is fulfilled. 
Now this doesn't mean that Jesus' work was finished that day. In fact, we know that it was just beginning. We're only four chapters into Luke. There's an awful lot of book left to happen. So, what did happen on that day? And what did happen when Jesus showed up? Well, what happened when he came to be with us here on earth is he brought heaven, the kingdom of God, with him to earth. And ever since then, we have been dual citizens of both the earth and the kingdom of heaven, which is here on earth. And as citizens, we have rights and responsibilities. Remember, Jesus ended his teaching in the synagogue that day with a statement. And as I thought about it, I thought this is kind of interesting, kind of rare for Jesus. As he moved on in his ministry, he, his teaching often took the form of questions. As a matter of fact, someone who had more time on their hands than I did actually counted. And in the Gospels, Jesus asked a total of 307 questions. And he only answered eight. So these questions are important. These are questions that cannot be answered for us. Each of us must answer these questions for ourselves. And they include Jesus' questions about invitations. Why are you looking for me? What do you want? Not what do you want, but what do you really want? Questions about Jesus himself. Who do you say that I am? Questions about healing. Who touched me? Do you want to get well? Questions about faith. Do you believe? Why do you doubt? And why are you so afraid? And questions about love. If you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? And Jesus, the ultimate question, do you love me? Well, the kingdom of God is an ongoing kingdom and it requires ongoing kingdom work, ongoing thought, ongoing effort, and ongoing faith. Moreover, it requires courage enough to honestly answer the questions that Jesus asked of us. Jesus' work was not completed on that day in Nazareth, nor during his life on earth. The ongoing work of discipleship is left to, trusted to, us. Eustace Gonzalez calls this the unconclusion of Jesus' work. It is the challenge of discipleship. What now lies ahead, said Gonzalez, is a continuous pilgrimage where every turn in the road will bring unexpected vistas and new challenges where every mountain climb will reveal loftier peaks to ascend, and where every valley visited will open new fields of service. What are your vistas? What do you see out there in front of you? Let Jesus light the path so that you may see it better. What mountains do you have left to climb? Let Jesus help you, guide you, be with you, give you a boost when you need it. And what fields need your service? Let Jesus work with you. Soren Kierkegaard said, faith means just that. That what I seek is not here, which is precisely the reason I believe it. Now I've read that statement, the start of that statement over I don't know how many times this week, so let me repeat it once for you. What I seek is not here, which is precisely the reason I believe it. Continuing, faith signifies precisely the deep, strong, blessed unrest which urges on the believer so that he cannot find rest in this world. So the one who does find complete rest here should also cease to be a believer. For a believer cannot sit still, like one sitting with a walking staff in his hand. A believer pushes forward. Like Jesus, 
We are strengthened by Scripture and the Holy Spirit. They calm us in our blessed unrest and guide us in our journey of discipleship, bringing good news, freedom, recovery, and relief to all God's people. Through Christ, may we all live as kingdom citizens in an ongoing year of the Lord's favor. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, friends, we think about all the ways we have contributed to that through our, our gifts, our presence, our prayers, our service, our witness, and we ask God to bless all of those. Lord, bless all of the offerings that we have made, offerings of body, offerings of mind, offerings of sustenance, and bless them and bless us in the giving. And for everyone who receives them, is touched by them, let them be blessed through our work, which happens only with you. God bless you, and God bless our offering, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
vista that you encounter and every mountain that you climb and every field that is placed before you know that God is there. God is already there. And God is there when you are there. And God will be there long after because we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Go forth with the blessing of a citizen, of a friend, of a companion, of a co-worker with Jesus Christ, our Lord, who goes with you in blessing, in faith, and in love. Amen.